to see all of you here today. Let us take a moment, take a breath. Center yourself in this place and let us pray. God of wonder and delight, mystery and majesty, we are so grateful to be here in your presence among friends and family, new faces and older ones, the familiar and the strange. We know that everything you bring to us, you bring in abundance. Help us to see it, taste it, feel it, and appreciate all of it. In your son's holy name, amen. Let's see. It's a train of Don't need to get Just stay around the All you need is To hear the deeds of sun Don't need to get Just go in the love So people get Just a ghost of is the key. Open the doors and bar. There's a lot of You gotta get the mic on here. So I have only a couple announcements today. Uh, first, are these beautiful flowers are from the Burn family? They had Tom Burns funeral here yesterday. Uh, and that's Renee Bauer's husband, our director of Family Promise, whose husband passed away last week. So we had his memorial here yesterday. And and graciously left us some flowers to enjoy. We'll get it sorted. Text always our friend here. Um, and then the only other announcement I think that I have, unless somebody has one. Anyone else have an announcement? Soon. We have so many of this coming Saturday, and you don't have to bring anything, just come and we'll either let you sew or work on any craft you want to do. Or just come to see what we got going on. Yep, and so Susie has uh, a beautiful space called Women of Means, and it is at 1410 Birch, correct? Okay, has a beautiful mural now on the wall on the outside of the building, so you can't miss it. Uh, and she will be hosting Sodia Glow second and fourth Saturdays. And so this coming weekend, 
lunch is included. You just show up and it's all free. You well, show you up. Learn how to learn quilt. How to you quilt. can learn some other sewing skills, crafting skills. You can show up and just visit. Um, if you like to have an adult beverage, you can have that too. So um, it's a, a great space to have some fellowship. And so we're grateful for Susie for that. They also do bridge and different things there as well in the evenings. And, you know, it's a space that's available to just hang out in. If you want fellowship, if you want a place to just be you, it's a great place to do that. Um, my only other little announcement is just a little bit about this church. Um, most of you know, but some of you may not. We are a Disciples of Christ congregation. Um, the Disciples were the first American denomination formed in Cane Ridge, Kentucky. Um, and our church camp that we visited last week um, was, we affectionately call it Cane Ridge West, and it's on Stone Campbell Drive. We are part of the Stone Campbell Movement. And our disciples' motto, if you will, is we are a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. And our goal, of course, is to live that out in every way that we can. Disciples churches are not churches governed and directed by a hierarchy. We are congregational driven churches, which means this congregation and the next disciples congregation might look very different. We do have an international body that helps us with things like global missions, helps us with selecting and, and pairing ministers with churches, um, but it is truly congregational driven. The people of this church decide who and what this church will become. And so I'm grateful for all of you. That's all I have for announcements. So let's sing a little more. Oh. Yep. Cane Ridge West. Yep. We did service there, sorry, last weekend, as I mentioned. Uh, we had 11 of our people there, which was just beautiful. Uh, they managed to fill the, the main hall at Cane Ridge with attendees celebrating the 40th anniversary of that building, that main lodge, beautiful. If you've never been up to Cane Ridge, it's by Lincoln, Montana. Uh, absolutely stunning log building, beautiful camp. Um, just down the road is the sculpture in the wild, Blackfoot sculpture in the wild. So it's an absolutely amazing area to go wandering. So if you haven't ever been, definitely check it out. There we go, Terry. <coughs> Oh, 
soon, both of their worries were gone. Finally, Ruby felt like herself again. Of course, that wasn't the last time that she ever had a worry. Everyone gets them from time to time, but now that she knew how to get rid of them, they never hung around for long. Good morning. Scripture this morning is Psalm 34, 1 through 14. I will bless she who is God at all times. Her praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in she who is strength, but humble here and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of she who is exalted, and let us exalt her name together. I saw it. I sought she who saves, and she answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon her and be radiant. Let not your face be ashamed. I calm in my affliction, and she who hears me had saved me from all my troubles. The messenger of she who saves encompasses those who revere her, and she will deliver them. Taste and see that she who is delight is good, Happy are they who trust in her. Revere she who is God, and you there are her saints, for those who revere her lack nothing. The young lions suffer want for food and starve, but those who seek she who provides lack no good thing. Come, children, listen to me. I will teach you the reverence of she who is majesty. Who is the woman or man that desires life and would love long days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The second scripture is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Humble yourselves so under the mighty hand of God, that God may exalt you all in due time. All your anxieties cast on God, because God cares for you all. Be sober, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, goes around seeking someone to devour. Resist it, firm in your faith, for you all know the same sufferings that are throughout the world your sisters and brothers are experiencing. And the God of all grace, who has called you to God, is eternal glory in Christ with God's self. After you have all suffered for a little while, restore, support, strengthen, and establish, establish you all. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for the hearing of this word. For those of you who are new here, those words may have sounded a little strange. We have been using for the last year, almost two years now, uh, a women's lectionary uh, published by Wilda Gaffney, who's a Hebrew scholar um, and who prepared the words of our translation with a focus on the divine feminine and a focus on the original Hebrew scriptures that suggest, in many cases, no gender. So if they sound different, it's because they are. I encourage you to read the scriptures in whatever version of the Bible that you find most comforting and then read it in a different one. Hear the words differently. Sometimes that's a clue. So I wanted to give that little caveat for the people who are new with us because 
it can seem a little strange. Who here desires life? Yeah. I'm among them. What does it mean to live? Better yet, what does it mean to have a good life, a successful life, a healthy life, or even a precious life? If we gauge the quality of life by today's modern standards, some of us would be marginally successful, most of us would be barely there, and a few of us would be considered utter failures. In this country, life and living are most often than not defined by what we own, the latest tech, the fast car, and all the toys, or maybe measured by how close we come to some impossible standard that we will destroy ourselves to reach. There's a reason that Botox injections have increased over 400% in recent years. In this country, we are more stressed than we've ever been, we work more hours, and we are further in debt. The rat race culture we engage in is literally killing us. Our scarcity mentality, this idea that we will never have enough or be enough, in my view, is the single most destructive element in our world today. Combine this with an ever-increasing need for instant gratification and a gospel of prosperity, and we create the perfect storm of mass annihilation. There is no allowance for suffering, no room for grieving, and no recognition of all that truly makes us human. Everything becomes a quick fix, consumable and disposable including people. Heaven forbid that you struggle, and woe to the one that admits it out loud. We are so caught up in this individual, self-centered rapture that we have forgotten we are free. As many of you know, I go into our detention center to visit with people who are incarcerated. Some of them have been convicted of heinous crimes, but most of them are either waiting for a trial or are recently sentenced for crimes that, to me, are more a symptom of a disease, and it's one that most of us suffer. We have allowed the systems of this world to convince us that we don't have enough and that we aren't enough. And we've allowed them to convince us that we, we need to do anything and everything we can to strive to reach some impossible status that we will never reach. This belief that everything, money, power, fame, and even freedom is pot, and that the bigger piece you take, the less there's left for me, so I will annihilate you and yours to better the position of me and mine. This belief is so destructive. I meet incarcerated people every day, and I only see the ones in detention twice a week. Let that sink in. I meet incarcerated people every single day. I only go to detention twice a week. What are the chains in your life? What cage are you living in? Maybe it's the traps of ageism, a body and mind that seem to be slowly failing you, leaving you feeling even less useful or less worthy than you have before. Maybe it's the disease of racism and inequality, the desperate battles waged within a patriarchal system of privilege that reinforces worth by gender, color of skin, place of birth, an immigration status, leaving some desperate to defend their place in the world and others desperate to find it. 
Maybe it's the golden cage of retirement. Only days, weeks, or maybe months left to these jobs that we've come to despise in order to reach that elusive end date. Or worse, the platinum cage of healthcare in this country. Work to the point of breaking to afford sick care for when we're broken. Maybe it's the pit of despair and division dug by social media, or the crabs in a bucket mentality that breaks down our will to keep trying as we find ourselves dragged back down again and again. Or maybe it's just the sleight of hand of this political frenzy, the media chummed waters of human indecency that leave us overwhelmed and overcome by apathy and complacency. I meet incarcerated people every day. So I ask again, who desires life? I shared a poem last week by Leighton E. Williams called Hard Hope. And part of that poem reads, it's harder than it used to be for me to imagine all of us gathering a drawing together from the far edges of the world. These days, it feels so much more like a scattering and a shattering, a graveyard of broken relationships and walls built to keep us apart. What God has joined together in love, let no one tear asunder. We are trying so hard. It's harder than it used to be to imagine redemption a world made better, a humanity unfettered by brokenness and bigotry, fear and despair. It's harder than it used to be to believe that you're there. But it's easier to believe that I'm wrong. We are so often wrong. Please let me be wrong. Leighton Williams, please let me be wrong. This is the message of our psalm and our reading today. Please let us be wrong. We were never promised this life would be easy. In fact, throughout our scriptures, we are reminded again and again that we will suffer. We will be persecuted. We read and hear time and time again the lamentations, <clears throat> the afflictions, and the woe of a people who are hurting. The problems we face, they're not new. The struggles we have, they're not new. They're as old as time itself, and yet we continue to allow ourselves to be taken in by the illusion that we are alone in our suffering. The one who is God, the one who is strength, the one who is exalted, the one who saves, the one who hears, the one who is delight, the one who provides, the one who is majesty, the one who is our God, is the one who's always with us every step of this beautiful, horrible, wonderful life. Life is freedom. Truly living is freedom. And to truly live, we follow the guidance of the psalmist and the author of 1 Peter. Seek peace and pursue it. Humble yourself. Cast all your anxiety on God. Be sober. Be alert. Turn from evil. Resist these traps and cages and illusions that tempt you into believing that you are unworthy and unloved. David Bartlett writes, however one seeks to understand the personality of evil, the reality of evil is an undeniable feature of the Christian understanding of the world. We do not have to deal with only human error or bad intention or misfortune. 
There are powers of evil that transcend both the individual actors and their action. Racism is deeper and tougher than the sum total of people who display prejudice. Greed can be institutionalized and take on a life of its own. Sometimes the only viable description of the woes of the world is to say evil is both real and strong. God, of course, is stronger. But Christians are still called and strengthened to engage in a genuine struggle with forces whose ultimate defeat we know, but who in the meantime are just as ravenous, ambulatory, and dangerous as the lion, First Peter, warns us to fear. So do as the psalmist do. Count your afflictions. Acknowledge your suffering. Feel it. And release it. And know that no matter how hard it may seem, no matter how impossible it may feel, and no matter how long you have struggled, nothing, not even this ridiculous mess we find ourselves in, nothing can separate us from God. With God, we can learn to truly live in the midst of our suffering, not beyond it. Our fear, our trembling, our lamentation, and our prayer. They are rewarded by the nearness of God. God is with us and within us. Freedom, even from behind bars, can be ours. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
As we enter into our time of prayer, they'll open us in prayer, and I'll leave room for you all to share the joys and concerns of your hearts, ideally out loud, so we can join in with you. God knows what's written there. Sometimes we need to hear it. And then we'll close in the Our Father. Let us pray. God of all that is holy and precious in this life, the beauty of creation, the joy of tears and laughter, and sometimes the sorrows. You journey with us through it all and you remind us that no matter where we go, we never do it alone. For what and for whom do we pray today? Prayers for Bernie and all who struggle with that long, long-term pain. For Barb Moy, who is suffering with arthritis pain through her whole body. For Barb Moy and others who struggle with those autoimmune illnesses like arthritis. For safety for those who aren't with us today, those travelers, those watching online. I offer a prayer for those who mourn the loss and death of loved ones. And I also offer up a prayer of so much gratitude for this beautiful little girl we celebrated on Friday, our little niece, Elena, who had her ninth birthday, this little beautiful child who's made it her mission to be a light in the lives of other children who are hospitalized, who hasn't let this diagnosis of a, a cancerous brain tumor, she hasn't let it sway her at all. In fact, she's used it to have a platform to help other kids. May we all be inspired by that kind of light in the world. Holy God, you give us these examples, this beautiful child, Jesus, these amazing people who step into the worst places of the world, step into the hardest circumstances and face it with a spirit that is truly free, a freedom that only you can provide us. Help us to recognize that freedom, to open ourselves up to that freedom through your grace as we share the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some of the chickens are 
Thank you, Terry. I don't think we thank you enough. And your voice, for some reason, was very beautiful today. You're extra, extra. <laughs> it, it was pre recorded. Oh, okay. I usually don't take that necessary risk. Oh, okay. Well, you're doing fine. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it. And I think everyone else here does too. Well, in my meditation today, I hope I got a little bit together here. So my question went, was, and I, I keep coming through it because we all read a lot of psalms. What is a psalm? So I kind of looked it up, kind of cheated on this one. It's a collection of 150 songs, prayers, and other compositions which make up the 19th book of the Old Testament. So there's all our facts. Traditionally, it's ascribed to King David. The Psalms have played an important role for the millennium in religious ceremonies, in liturgy, hymns, and private worship. This particular psalm today references David's thankfulness, what God has done for him and us. This is a prayer for safety from enemies and how the Lord delivers the weak. It's a guidance and reassurance for us in our everyday lives. Then when I came to 1 Peter, it is proclaiming that Jesus Christ, missionary. He is, in, he is writing, Christ, our cornerstone, the Christian and the unbelievers, Christian conduct, the Christian in the end times, the Christian in suffering, the Christian life in God's care. Each one of these topics covers the Christian walk just in one little chapter of this great book that we have in front of us. Simple guidance. Why do I come to church? That was another question today. Of course, to see my church family, and to rejoice to God and Lord Jesus Christ to partake of this holy table. So once again, I stand before you to offer with you the chance to partake of its wonderful proclamation. For we believe that all are 
heaven at Christ's table. The evening of that last supper, Jesus took ordinary bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he shared it with the people at the table. And he said, this is a body broken. This is new life shared with you. He took ordinary wine. He blessed it and he poured it and he shared it with all of you. This is what is new. A new hope poured out for all people. And he invited them to remember every time they came, every time they jumped, to do those things to remember. God of time and eternity, we are grateful for this communion hour. The partaking of the cup prepares us spiritually for the task of being Christian in our daily relationship. Help us, O oh God, to see more clearly your mission for us in the world today. And with your help, we can bring a better world into being. Amen. We offer bread, you are welcome to tear. We offer juice that you're welcome to drink. And for those who need it, that are only three times. This truly is an open table, and all are welcome. Let's do that. Thank you. 
Before I give my prayer for prayers of Thanksgiving, I just want to say that I really appreciate our little big church. <laughs> As of last Sunday, it was quite delightful that those could attend. And I was going, you know, as many as we look like we don't have many, we seem to have been abundant there. It really, I was impressed. Not only of the whole location, but also our friends and neighbors in other cities. So let's bow our head and thank our Lord. Thank you, Father, for life and giving abundantly to all those in need. Thank you for all blessings that flow from you to this church. Thank you for strength, guidance, love, and hope for all in the complicated world. And thank you for peace. Amen. Please join us for our final tip. You have received the blessing of new hope and new life. Nothing stands between you and God. 
taste the freedom. Amen. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.